You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 31st of October and I'm Roland from Milford. The key economic news domestically was the inflation rate for Australia, which increased 1.8% quarter on quarter compared to 1.6% expected. The annual rate of inflation increased to 7.3%, up from 6.1% a quarter earlier. Concerningly, food and gas were key contributors, as well as housing-related categories, furnishings, and new dwellings. We also had the federal budget, which is the first budget that has been released under the Albanese government. It was largely in line with expectations and pre-election promises. However, the deficit forecasts were less than the prior budget due to better-than-forecast commodity prices and a strong labour market. The European Central Bank hiked the deposit facility rate in line with expectations by 75 bips to 1.5% bringing borrowing costs to the highest level since 2009 as the central bank continues to fight inflation. They also tweaked their messaging, highlighting they will become more data-dependent, opening the door for slower rate rises if economic conditions deteriorate. In the US, we have the core PCE index data out for September. Remember, this is an alternative to the traditional CPI metric with different weights allocated to the basket of goods and services. It's the Fed's preferred metric. The data was largely in line, with annual core PCE increasing 5.1% year-on-year and 0.5% month-on-month. Now turning to equities, the US has entered its quarterly reporting period and we have seen some significant moves. Amazon missed analyst earnings estimates and guided to lower sales than expected going forward. It saw Amazon fall 20% after the result, however it recovered to be down only 7%. Amazon is down 40% over the past 12 months. Meta previously Facebook, reported a significant jump in expected capex in OPEX as they continue to try pivot the business as its core products Facebook and Instagram continue to slow. Meta was down an astonishing 25% or US $86 billion. It's now down 69% for the year. Google's parent Alphabet reported weaker than expected results with YouTube revenue actually falling 6%, albeit the prior period was very strong. The stock was down 9% on the day and is down 37% over the year. On a more positive note, Apple had a small beat versus expectations, albeit they haven't provided guidance so the outlook is uncertain. Apple rallied 7.5% on the day. Domestically, we are entering AGM season, plus there are a number of companies who do and in some cases must provide quarterly updates. Car sales reiterated the guidance of the AGM. JB Hi-Fi and Super Retail both released trading updates showing continued strength in retail sales and Viva Energy provided a quarterly update showing strong convenience and fuel sales with a softening in the refining margin. ResMed provided its quarterly results, which were mixed. ResMed reports in US dollars, so the earnings it receives from Europe were a bit softer due to the currency, and rest of world sales were also a touch weaker than expected. ResMed fell 5% on the day. Now turning to the week ahead, it's the week of rates. The RBA, RBNZ, the US Fed, and the Bank of England are all set to release their interest rate decisions. For Australia, the RBO on Tuesday is expected to increase the official cash rate by 25 basis points. The higher than expected inflation for the September quarter has some market commentators calling for a 50 bip increase. The RBNZ's current rate is at 3.5% compared to Australia at 2.6% and they're expected to move further into contractionary territory. On Thursday morning, the US Fed is expected to increase interest rates by 75 basis points to 4%. Chair Jerome Powell will hold a press conference afterwards, which always is insightful into how the Fed is seeing the unfolding inflation issues in the US. The US ISM manufacturing PMIs are to be released this week, with the market expecting a reading of 49.9. Now when this index is below 50, it implies the sector, being the US manufacturing sector, is contracting. This implies weakening demand for goods. We will continue to see US results being released, which will provide an idea of how the US economy and consumer is evolving and what is an increasingly turbulent time. In addition, many Australian companies at their AGMs will provide trading updates, which will also provide great insights into the Australian economy. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.